Check, check. Hey there, this is Jen. We're live. Unicorn Riot from just outside Stillwater, Minnesota. There's been a car picket outside of the local correctional facility. The honking just stopped a few minutes ago. And we are at a spot now where people have parked in this lot here. And we're hearing some interviews now. Yeah, no, it's not. Hello, supporters. Hey, everybody. Hey. Glad to see everybody out here. I'm here. I have two in prison, one in Shakopee and one in Faribault. My son's been doing the same crime since 2006. They keep on technical violations. I'm asking everybody for their prayers, and let's keep on, and let's get our people out. Amen. Because the coronavirus is no joke, and there's people in there, the governor is not telling us the truth. We don't know how many people are infected. Yep. We hear about it every day. So if you see me somewhere, hold up your hand and let me know that you're supporting the Minnesota Correction of Facilities to get our people out. Shame on you, Minnesota. Amen. Amen. Y'all know me with my loud mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Angela, Angela, y'all. Listen, they, it's a shame that they got these people in there. I got a nephew, Larico Barry. He gets out May 18th, and he's still stuck in there. And, and there's no way they shouldn't be letting people out. My son, Rarity Lampkin, is in Brush City Correctional Facility, and he was given an extra point. The, the investigation just found out that his sentence is illegal, and now we're waiting on Judge O'Brien from Dakota County to sign off to, to state that his sentence is illegal. So my, they got 20 days to make that decision. But Minnesota needs to stop hiding the fact that these inmates are suffering with COVID-19. They're not testing them so that we won't begin to know the numbers and that pressure won't be on their behind. They need to get in here with the health department and get this testing going and they need to free our people who qualify for work release and home monitoring. They, the governor is lying, stating there's nowhere for them to go. There's a lot of places that yes. stand it up yes. right now yes. uh, to place yes. them into hotel rooms, into Airbnbs, and into other uh, shelters and churches is even standing up to get involved. So they need to stop making excuses, uh, yes. uh, Governor and Commissioner Chanel. We'll see you soon, too. All right, free them all. 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 This is Antonia Alvarez that's going to speak. She's been holding a hunger fast outside of the Minnesota Governor's residence since the day after Easter. So what was that, April 14th or something like that? We're here outside, just outside of Stillwater in Minnesota. That's the correctional facility. My name's Sadie. I Hey. Hi, Sadie. Hey. I'm going to hear from somebody else now. Sorry, I'm out here because um, a lot of my students have family members, parents who are incarcerated, and I see the impact it has on their education each and every day. Um, I'm out here with Minnesota Educators Against ICE. Um, and in addition to calling for all prisoners and detainees to be released, I also want to call attention to the fact that 
the juvenile detention centers are yes. still up and running. Yes. The ju there are juveniles, kids still currently incarcerated in the Hennepin County yes. Juvenile Detention Center along with St. Paul. And those are kids being exposed to this lethal virus. And in addition to getting adults out, we need to get the kids out now. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody listen up, listen up, keep listening. There was just a protest, a car protest outside of the correctional facility. Hey. This is Antonia here. I want to speak in Spanish because the Latino immigrants inside, they not speak English. Yes. And it's very important. Pay attention how they feel when they not speak the same language with you. Yes. So, hoy voy a hablar en español para que puedan comprender ustedes lo que mis hermanos indocumentados ahí adentro sienten cuando no hablan el mismo idioma que ustedes. Los indocumentados Hi. no hemos hecho ningún crimen. Ser indocumentado es una violación civil, no es un crimen. The undocumented people in that prison have not committed a crime. Being an undocumented immigrant is a civil infraction, it's not a crime. No somos criminales. Muchas madres y padres de familia están ahí adentro por no poder arreglar su situación migratoria. We are not criminals. Many mothers and fathers of families are locked up in there because they haven't been able to resolve their immigration status. Nosotros estamos luchando y haciendo un llamado al gobernador y todas las autoridades del estado. We're, we're in this struggle and we're calling on the governor and all the authorities in this state. Que les estamos haciendo responsables y se mueren los indocumentados. That we're, called, we're holding you responsible if the undocumented people in there die. Las personas que ya están por cumplir su tiempo les deben de dar libertad. The people who are about to complete their sentences, they need to give them uh, liberty. De nada sirve decir que están peleando por la igualdad y que todos estamos protegidos de COVID-19, mientras que ahí adentro es una bomba de tiempo. They can't say that they're working for equality and that everyone in the state is going to be safe from COVID-19 at the same time as right in there there's a ticking time bomb. Yes. Estamos aquí para pedir y demandar justicia para los presos. We are here to ask and demand freedom for all the prisoners. Freedom! Freedom! violations is because he has mental illness. He was diagnosed with his first one when he was 16 months old and he had several more illnesses added on when he was four years old and by the time he was seven he was considered permanently disabled by the Social Security, Social Security Administration and he started getting disability. So when he was 19 and he got his offense and he started getting out and get, getting these technical violations. They were mostly because he was unmedicated after getting out of prison and not seeing a doctor yet. And the POs were not giving him any kind of consideration for the fact that he had a mental that's illness. Yes, that's what they do. So there's a lot of people in prison because shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. There's a lot of people in prison who are just there because they're mentally ill, and that's wrong. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
both want to speak, chime in, share your perspectives, thoughts, feelings. Anyone? No one. Are you all sure? So here's the deal. I'm going to come around and ask you to say one or two reasons why you are here. I'm here because this is wrong. Wrong. So we're here just outside. If you're just joining us here, there was a car, oh, picket caravan protest earlier. There was a, when I drove up, there was honking going on. Uh, people were circling over there. That's the correctional facility uh, just outside of Stillwater, Minnesota, which is east of St. Paul, which is east of Minneapolis and Twin Cities. We're here now in this parking lot where there's messages painted on cars, like free them all here. Again, here. And there's this sign right here. It says, Warren Limmer, shame on you. If you check our website, one of our most recently published articles was about a protest organized, I think, by these same folks as today, basically. Uh, that took place, COVID-19 is a life sentence, hashtag free them all now. The protest that took place outside the home of Senator Warren Limmer, State Senator Warren Limmer, he um, has been accused of not even allowing legislation, new bills to be heard regarding criminal justice reform, which would include giving more money to the correctional institution here in the state of Minnesota so that they could go about the process more quickly than they have been of freeing incarcerated people, freeing undocumented people being held in detention by ICE. During this time of the coronavirus pandemic, so he's been accused of not even allowing legislation to be heard regarding that. So people drove to his house. They said, Warren Limmer, shame on you for not allowing legislation to um, be heard on this topic that when that has to do with people's humanity. This idea of COVID-19 being a life sentence, you know, there's no, as for, as for some, as for coronaviruses and uh, the common, common cold and all that, there's no cure yet, but this, this disease has proven to be exceptionally infectious and deadly. So people are saying it's not, people don't deserve to die in prison. And someone just said that they're going around right now and hearing thoughts from people about why they're here. Are a real thing. Injustice is all around. It's injustice everywhere. Normal isn't working. We're not trying to go back to normal. We're trying to push back against the unjust system. Let's go. Let's push back, y'all. Let's push back. We have our reporter here to see what she says. I'm just here to listen. Whatever. Hey, <laughs> what about y'all over there? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> There's a sign here that says shame. This idea to shame politicians, uh, to shame people who are in positions of power to do something. It's about uh, releasing people during this time. The shame that could be brought on them, or maybe should be brought on them by these protesters' estimation because they're not acting more quickly. Oh, right here, um, the person wearing the Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee shirt is the mother of Everybody, an incarcerated so person at Rush City Saturday. that we heard We're not going to be here. We're going to announce the, the target by tomorrow evening. We hope you all join us. Again, the, the DOC has the power to release thousands of yes, inmates they now. They have the authority. They have the money. They know who they are. The fact that they're not doing is a grave injustice to our communities, to our families, to our people. It's time to get our people free. Thank you so much for coming out. And please come watch out next week, 1 o'clock Saturday. That's the time, that's the place. Be in yes. touch. Love you, love you, love all of you. Mask is totally falling off. Thank you. So next week. Hey, are we all meeting at Carbonis?
It's hard when you wear glasses and have to wear a mask as well. So, um, yeah, we've just heard from some people in this lot here about why they've attended today's car protest, caravan protest, in front of the correctional facility just outside of Stillwater. That's it in the background. Ma'am, excuse me. You're the mother of Rarity Lampkin, right? Yes, my son name is Rarity Lampkin. He was given an extra point when on the case he was found guilty of, he was actually supposed to be placed on to probation. Uh, Judge Tanya O'Brien and a prosecutor in Dakota County that worked with her gave him an extra point which uh, uh, bumped it up instead of probation to send him off to prison. At the time they did this, my son owned two stores, uh, A-plus clothing and an A-plus uh, candy store in St. Paul. My, my son has uh, nine children and needs to be out here taking care of his family. This is going to get overturned too because it's a it's a whole big mess in whatever way that possible they trying to deceive. That's why cases need to be looked into and we need to stay on top of this for the reasons of this Minnesota deception. I believe in Minnesota life, but you got to fight for it and overturn your case to, to help yourself in these courtrooms because these prosecutors and judges is using places like this to make millions of dollars off the back of these inmates. Free them all. Thank you. Uh, one more thing, if you if you could, um, last week, maybe it was two weeks ago, Wednesday, mm -hmm. we, there was a protest in front of the governor's residence in St. Paul yes. where Rarity called in live. Yes. And I, I know Stephanie from uh, Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee is, was on that call, but also were you on that call? Yes. And also, Ra thank you, and Rarity said that at the time he hadn't been able to access the law library yes. due to the lockdown. Is there any updates there? Uh, the, the, they still not uh, moving forward with any other activity. There's nothing happening. The only thing they are able to do is, is play cards and dominoes. They don't have nothing going on, no law library. Um, uh, the only thing that's open is the kitchen as far as the working. And no, they, they don't have access to education, schooling, any program and nothing. So you might as well free them all. Why hold them in there when they're non-productive to just sit around and figure out who's going to be sick next, sick next? The best thing I want to say, Governor Walz is stating he got so many tests. Get the tests in the prison and test the inmates now so that the, the uh, eruption of this COVID could at least be dealt with. You cannot handle situations that you're not informed about. Get the testing going, test the prisoners so that you can know where are we with this with this COVID-19. That is cruel and inhumane to sit up here and ignore prisoners like they, these are not people too. These are people too. And I got a nephew who's also in here. His out date is May 18. It don't make sense. He's 15 days away from being out of here that they still got him in here. And he stated he think he had COVID before. So it's a lot of them being in there sick, but ain't nothing they could do when they do get sick, but lay there and try to suffer it out. That's terrible. Thank you so much for, for talking with us today. Thank you. So many people have taken off. Folks are driving. There's going to be a left turn that people, some people make, and they're driving that way past the cemetery in the distance there. This is right by the correctional facility. And there. There's somebody else that, oh, I need one to talk to you. Maybe I'll check my messages really quick and I'll give you a quick update.
You hear beeping going on in the distance as people leave. One second, guys. We're looking here at the prison itself. Let's walk over to it a little bit. We just heard from the mother of Rarity Lampkin. I think her name is Angela Edwards. We saw her outside of Senator Warren Limmer's house last week Saturday, around this time. Protest organized by the same folks. A noise demonstration outside the home of Senator Limmer. To try to encourage him uh, to do what they're accusing him of not doing, which is allowing legislation to be heard on the Senate floor regarding criminal justice and carceral reform at this time, which would include more funding given to the prison system in Minnesota so that they could go about the business of freeing low-risk people during this time that are incarcerated. Low-risk means people that are imprisoned on technical violations. It means people who are at a higher risk of catching the coronavirus because they have an ongoing medical condition or pre-existing conditions. Maybe they're immunocompromised. Maybe they're an elderly population that has also a higher risk of catching this infectious new virus. Not that new now, but it's new in terms of how long we've known about it. Less than, less than five months we've known about this specific strain, which is thought to have originated in a bat. Bats and birds are supposed to be ideal, kind of ideal car uh, carriers for coronaviruses, these flying animals. So here's the, here's the prison. It's just outside of Stillwater in Minnesota, which is east of the Twin Cities. It's just a motorcycle right here. A lot of people you will see a lot of motorcyclists if you come to Stillwater in uh, April through November, I want to say, Minnesota. That might be too generous, too optimistic. We heard from, we heard confirmed just now by Rarity Lampkin's mother that there hasn't been any access for prisoners incarcerated in facilities like this one, Rarity is at a correctional facility, a men's correctional facility in Rush City, Minnesota. And it's been said as of last week on a phone call with uh, Rarity and a member of the Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee, Stephanie. It was revealed that really the only activities that go on inside these prisons at this time are in, are in the gymnasium and the only work available is in the kitchen. So we heard from Rarity's mother that by that logic, there's no work for these work eligible people to do inside of correctional facilities. So work, work eligible people that are, uh, would qualify for work release is another subset of the incarcerated population that it's been identified as um, would be good to release them at this time, like they don't need to be incarcerated. Here's somebody leaving. So pretty much everybody's left by now. Thanks for tuning in today. This is Jen with the Unicorn Riot here in the Twin Cities. I'm gonna check my messages really quick. I see a message from uh, the uh, from the person that's running the live stream. It would be nice if I could appear on the video. Uh, it's really hard to do that though with uh, this rig. But um, I would say uh, 
that we have this whole web we have this whole web page right now. We call it C-SCAN, our coronavirus coverage, our coronavirus crisis coverage. C3 is another name for this project. And it's a whole page where we have a little bit of resources about the coronavirus. Like I was mentioning earlier, where it originated. We've known about coronaviruses for several decades. This is just a new one that is, uh, yeah, just new to human, human beings, knowledge and widespread infection. So you go to that page and you'll see at the top, you got our most recent three articles on the subject. And then we have some information for you. And then there's resources as well as our, uh, some of our next latest coverage. We're actually running a fundraiser right now. That's one of our campaigns. Uh, we're trying to get more funding for our C3 initiative. Hey, there's a water tower in the distance of the correctional facility. I don't know if you can see the razor wire over it. I think that's just regular barbed wire. I saw razor wire over different parts of the compound as I drove here. Anyway, uh, uh, Give MN is a program uh, in Minnesota designed for gifting uh, gifting dollars to nonprofit organizations, which Unicorn Riot is. We're registered nonprofit since 2015. It's actually our fifth birthday as of March 20th. So we're, we're asking if people enjoy our coverage, enjoy coverage like this and want to see more of it, that if you're in a position to do so, you can make a donation to us either at our website or through Give Min, which uh, there's extra incentives through donating through there this week. Uh, there's like, what I, what I mean by that is chances to uh, get matching donations and yeah, general uh, pair matches. So I think I might go down here. I'm not really sure who else might be in this area right now. I see a police car right there. So yeah, I think uh, we, would, we would like to take this stream down now. Thanks again for tuning in. You can check out our other coverage of caravans like this. Uh, at our website, unicornriot.ninja.